and really abut in close proximity a lot of the upper teeth and dentition. So as we're kids and we lose our first set and our second set of teeth start to drop in, sometimes those teeth are up against the sinus, sometimes those teeth are in the sinus, um, and so there's a lot of patients that may come in complaining of um, a sinus infection and they, they feel like they have a sinus infection because they have teeth sensitivity. So it's our job to try to figure out, is it really a sinus infection or is it something or a problem with the teeth? Hey guys, welcome to another episode of We Knows Noses. I'm Dr. Reddy, joined by Dr. Smith. And today we are going to discuss a topic. Uh, the question we're trying to answer is, can my teeth cause sinus issues? And so I'll let Dr. Smith um, start off. Sure. So there's a lot of times that we get the, the impetus of this discussion is basically we get a lot of patients that either have teeth sensitivity or teeth pain, sinus pain, cheek pain, and don't really know, should I go to an ENT? Should I go to a dentist? And so um, we'll kind of give you some pearls. We'll go over a little bit of the background of kind of where the teeth are and why there might be some overlap between sinus problems and, and dental problems. Um, so the teeth, you know, essentially you have 32 teeth in the adult mouth and they all sit kind of in four quadrants. So you have your uppers and then your lower quadrants here. <clears throat> the uppers all sit up on the maxilla, which is the upper part of the lip and, and mid face here. And that abuts against the sinuses. The sinuses are just air filled trauma cushions that go around the eye. And so they sit like a C shape around the eye and underneath of the brain. The ones on the bottom here, the maxillary sinuses, <clears throat> excuse me, sit on either side of the nose, right underneath the eye within the cheek. And those maxillary sinuses, as we start to age into our teenage years, start to get larger and larger and larger and really abut in close proximity a lot of the upper teeth and dentition. So as we're kids and we lose our first set and our second set of teeth start to drop in, sometimes those teeth are up against the sinus, sometimes those teeth are in the sinus. Um, and so there's a lot of patients that may come in complaining of um, a sinus infection and they, they feel like they have a sinus infection because they have teeth sensitivity. So it's our job to try to figure out, is it really a sinus infection or is it something or a problem with the tooth? Um, do you want to talk about how you kind of first approach somebody if they come in and they say, you know, I have teeth sensitivity, it's always on my right hand side and yeah. just try to figure out the, the problem? Sure. So um, one of the main things that we do is we take a look with a little camera in the nose called a nasal endoscopy. And we're looking in the nose at the entranceway to the cheek sinus, which is the maxillary sinus. And we're seeing if we see any evidence of obstruction or pus in that area. If there is level, if there's ev any evidence of obstruction or pus in that cheek sinus area, and the patient is complaining of pressure or tenderness by the cheek and the upper teeth, then it's a sign that there's probably some type of an infection causing irritation to the tooth. Mm -hmm. Um, one of the next steps, uh, oftentimes is getting a CAT scan or an imaging study and actually taking a look at that tooth sinus interface and seeing if there's maybe a tooth that's extending into the sinus that might be seeding bacteria from your mouth into the sinus, or maybe there's a small little fistula that's there or a hole that shouldn't be there between your sinus and your mouth. Um, or maybe there is a chronic tooth infection that's causing it. Things like a really bad cavity or what we call a periapical abscess or something else that's sim similar to that that might be causing bacteria to go up from your tooth area or your mouth area to your sinus area. Yep. So, of course, like you know, we always look at the teeth, too, mm -hmm. and the gums to see if there's any signs of inflammation mm -hmm. along the tooth or or if it's... You know, we may sometimes palpate along the upper uh, dentition and along the gum line up there, up towards the cheek to see if there's any fluctuance or any um, what we call induration or swelling or, or inflammation up there that might be indicative of it starting as a tooth problem. Um, and sometimes it is both, 
Uh, mm -hmm. Sometimes a patient may have a dental abscess that then becomes a bad sinus infection. Um, and we often see these, a lot of times these come from dentists to us, but sometimes they come to us um, first as well. And they have this ongoing drainage. Some patients just have a cough and maybe a toothache um, from the pus draining down the back of the throat. But you wanna go over a little bit of like what we do. So if we have a sinus infection, we've diagnosed a sinus infection, we know it's a sinus infection, but we also suspect that there's a tooth problem. Um, and maybe we got a CAT scan that shows that it's a tooth problem. What, what do you next do? If you think that there's like a, a, root ab, a root problem within the tooth that might also need to be addressed. Yes, yeah, so it's a little controversial. There's not always a 100% right answer with this. I mean, do you start with the tooth that's infected and you maybe ask the dentist to take out the tooth or maybe fill the tooth or drain the tooth abscess? And then, um, or do you start off with addressing the sinuses first, more maybe with conservative management like nasal sprays and rinses and antibiotics? Um, or do you do a sinus procedure, right? And I think generally speaking, you first try conservative measures first, which is um, nasal sprays, sinus rinses, antibiotics, things like that to try to get the infection under control. And if everything gets better, then you may be able to get away with not doing much more. Um, if the dentist feels like you absolutely need a tooth intervention, you can certainly start off with that. Mm -hmm. If it's, um, but if there's anything more where you have like a fistula, or you know you have recurrent sinus issues despite addressing the tooth, then it's reasonable at that point to probably clean out that sinus via a minimally invasive sinus procedure. Yeah, agreed. Um, because otherwise that pus that's hanging out in the cheek sinus is always right above your tooth line. And if you don't clear it out completely, oftentimes the tooth may not get completely better. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, one of that minimally invasive um, procedure that Dr. Reddy was talking about, something that we all do here at NJENT. And it is nice to be able to go in there and maybe a combination with the, the dental treating the tooth source and us kind of dilating or opening up that sinus and cleansing out that pus it often gives patients an option to heal much faster uh, than having to go through a full surgery and, and trying to schedule everything um, that way. So it does offer a nice additional option that's kind of minimally invasive, less, um, less healing time for the patient. Correct. Did you want to comment on another common thing that we see, which is um, patients that are getting implants? Yeah, like Teeth sure. implants. Oftentimes patients are getting implants for missing teeth um, for cosmetic reasons or functional reasons. And the oral surgeon um, is putting these implants into the upper part of the teeth. Right. Do you see any problems with those? Yeah, now? sometimes. So yeah, th those are very tricky, especially if there's a very thin maxilla between the sinus. So if someone has a very large maxillary sinus, there may not be a lot of bone to put an implant in. Um, some orth, um, uh, oral surgeons or, 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 or implant surgeons uh, for dental implants may offer what's called a sinus lift, where essentially they may lift the lining of the sinus and tuck some bone grafting in there to try to get more space to put an implant in, because those implant posts are, are pretty long. And so in a lot of patients, um, those typical posts would sit right up into their sinus. And in some patients, those posts will then trigger because it's a foreign body, a sinus inflammation and sinus infection. So yep. yeah, good point. Yeah, the implants can certainly be a culprit for sinus pathology then. And do you ever see any, as far as like, I know we mentioned this maybe in an old podcast, but have you ever seen any other things with teeth in the nose or in the sinuses that might be yeah. of interest to people listening? Yes, yeah, so, I mean, sometimes it, uh, you can find a tooth which, within the nose, which is rare, but more commonly within the actual the sinus. sinus itself. And usually they don't cause much if issues within the sinus, but certainly you don't want a tooth in your nose. Right. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Agreed. I've even found um, dental bits within the maxillary sinus. And so a dental drill bit um, that had fractured off and gone into wow. a maxillary sinus. Um, now that the dentist knew that that had gone in there, but had to fish that out a uh, separate procedure. So, the, they are really close in proximity. So, so that, that is why a lot of people can't quite figure out, is it tooth or is it sinus? Correct. 
I think. Is, do we have anything else to add? No, I think that's yeah. it. We'll talk more at, in later and future dates about other dental overlaps with the ENT because there are other areas that, that um, things from um, within the dent tend to overlap a lot with other areas in the head and neck. We'll talk about them at a later date. But no, that's it. That, that's all that we have for today. So thank you for joining us on another We Knows Noses podcast. Make sure you like and subscribe. Thank you. Thank you.